Hello and welcome back for another video. Uh, today we've got a new problem. We were looking at the dashboard during the drive uh, yesterday and the volts gauge was reading off the scale uh, well into the red. And so the very first thing that you want to do of course is get a voltmeter, put it on the battery while that's happening and check is the gauge correct is the first thing that you're looking for. Assuming it is, which you know, voltmeters are fairly reliable so it's probably going to be correct. Uh, then the problem is that we have an overcharging situation. So uh, that's what we're going to be playing with today. Let's get started. Now at this point you're going to have some options. We know that the alternator isn't performing as it's supposed to be because we know that the voltage coming out of it is too high. Uh, so there's a bad regulator on this one that's at least the most likely cause for that. Uh, probably one of the few things that could cause that actually. But anyway, uh, so we could either fix the unit that's in there or we can replace it. A uh, couple advantages and disadvantages to each. Uh, obviously replacing it with another Lucas alternator is going to be a lot more expensive, especially since a regulator is usually something on the order of 20 or 30 bucks. New alternator could be 100 or 200 for a remanufactured one. Uh, they can be up there and that's, that's just today. Who knows at the time you're watching this video what that's going to look like. So. Uh, just think of cost could be could be one thing that, that you could be looking at. We're actually going to kind of do both. I'm going to show you how to repair this one, but I'm also going to show you how to install a newer alternator. I've got one from a, a General Motors vehicle. I pretty much I look up a Chevy from the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, they all pretty much use the same alternator design, uh, and, and they have the same kind of three-wire setup. Uh, so there's going to be another video that I'm going to make about alternators that explain exactly what those three wires do. But generally speaking, you have the spinning bit in the middle. That's an electromagnet. That needs 12 volts because otherwise the electro part of the electromagnet doesn't work and you've just got a bunch of spinning metal that doesn't do anything. So you energize that. That's called the field. Around the outside of the alternator, you see this black ring. That's actually part of it and it's called the stator. Uh, if you remember your high school physics, when you pass a magnet over a wire, it makes a current in that wire. It induces a current. We've got the electromagnet part, so that is spinning because the belt is turning it. And so that is going to induce a current. Stator. Now the stator then is making an alternating current. Um, and inside the back of the alternator, uh, you've got what's called a rectifier or I guess a diode pack would be more accurate in, in these cars, but basically the same thing. And alternating current is not what you want. That's where you've got positive, negative, positive, negative. We just want a straight 12 volts. Straight 12 volts positive or about 12 volts. It's actually a little bit more, but you want some uh, enough voltage to charge a battery, but it needs to be direct current, which means only a positive signal. And so the rectifier's job is to cut off the negative side of that so that all you get is a positive 12 volts. Uh, or I guess in the case of an alternator, it's probably 14 to 14 and a half is, is pretty typical, somewhere in that range. Uh, but you want the positive voltage coming out the back of the alternator. That's what the rectifier does. And then because it would be RPM dependent otherwise, you speed up the engine, you're generating more voltage. We don't want 17 or 18 volts. That will burn up the points. It could damage the battery, a uh, number of other electrics in the car. So you want to limit that too. And there's a voltage regulator built into the back of most alternators, not the early ones, but built into the back of most alternators uh, that will regulate that, that DC current so that it doesn't go over a certain voltage either. Okay, so we've got a three-wire alternator here. Let me pull out the plug so that I can show you. And two of the wires are straight brown. One of them is brown with a yellow stripe. Check the wiring diagram on your car, but I can at least describe it for this one. Uh, the large brown wire, generally the largest anyway, is the output wire for the alternator. The voltage that's being generated and charging the battery goes here. The other brown wire, which is usually a smaller one, is called a sensing wire. Uh, this senses battery voltage and makes sure that the charging voltage at the battery is sufficient. Not every alternator is going to have this. This brown with a yellow stripe then, which is actually falling out of there, I'll fix that later. This brown with a yellow stripe is an indicator wire. And this is going to go to the gauge where you've got a little red ignition light. And what's happening here is that you have a positive current going to the gauge, uh, to the bulb I should say, 
and then through this wire and it's supposed to ground through the alternator. Well, if the alt so you've got a positive current going towards the alternator, it, it's negative, it's sort of accepting it here, it's flowing through the engine back to the negative terminal of the battery, so you've got a complete circuit. When the alternator is charging, the alternator has a positive signal as well. So you've got a positive signal going one way, a positive signal going the other way, and look at that, you've got no current that's flowing. It's, there's current, but it's not moving, and moving current is what does all the work. And so if you have no moving current, you can't light a bulb, that's what causes the bulb to go out. So those are the three wires that you need, and it's conveniently in one little plug on the back of these. Uh, but you've got the same three wires on a GM alternator as well. So uh, kind of convenient, so you just need, the plug's not going to fit, but you can use all of these same wires and kind of generally hook it up with only a few little minor modifications. Uh, it's going to be more if you've got a later TR6 with the air pump on it, uh, but we're not going to address that because I don't want to. Uh, it's just extra stuff. I've never done it, and so I really can't speak to it too much anyway. But uh, So that's what we're going to do today, and then in another video I will go more in depth into alternators, and I'm also going to show you uh, how to change the voltage stabilizer in, in this one anyway. It's going to be a little bit different depending on the alternator that you have, but generally very, very similar to the same thing. So let's get started. Probably not too much of a surprise, but the very first thing that you're going to want to do is take the old alternator off. So starting by taking out the plug, I'm going to take the number one spark plug lead out of the way just because that's in the way. I have already done this. Do not have the battery connected when you go to work on the alternator. Uh, these all, I mean, these wires are going to have battery current going through them, and so if you accidentally touch something, uh, you're going to make showers of sparks. It's going to be all sorts of fun to, to look at, but generally not what you want. So the next thing then, let's hope that I've got the right size wrench. Do loosen this. Drop the washers all over the place. That's an important part of vehicle maintenance. It is worth noting that this is a rebuilt alternator that is in this car. I didn't put it in, uh, but sometimes you're going to find little spacer pieces between the alternator and other parts. Uh, it's basically just to get it to fit right. You want this belt to line up with all of the pulleys as close as possible. Uh, if you don't get the belt to line up with all, if you don't get all the pulleys to line up. You're going to be kind of twisting the belt, and it's going to shorten the lifespan of it. So once that's in, slip the belt off. We'll put that back on later. Get it in the way of your air horn there that I don't know why I haven't taken out. You're going to get a much clearer view of this once the alternator's out of the way, but there's a bolt that goes through on the bottom. And that's important to get off too. And there's going to be some spacer pieces. So I've got a lift. I can just move the car out of the way, but make sure that you're careful not to drop pieces because, of course, if you do, it will roll exactly under the center of the car where it's hardest to reach. I'm just going to loosen this bolt on the thermo uh, on the water pump housing here. That is what lets this adjust so I can get it out of the way. Okay, there's the alternator out of the way. You see I was taking out carefully. That's because you've got these spacer pieces that will fall off the end of the bolt. And there's kind of a gap in here. That gap in there goes on the mount that attaches to the block. So now let's compare our alternators. 